to our June webinar. This is going to be the first of a series of two uh, webinars about fellows research special. And what well, I'm going to first introduce very briefly uh, what's about our GoGN fellowships. Uh, they are designed, the scheme is designed to support GoGN alumni and members in the last stage of the PhD. Uh, the first core has just finished uh, from October last year until March this one. Uh, you have uh, lots of information on recordings uh, in our website. And the second core has just started this uh, uh, last month. So some activities fellows uh, take up during their fellowship is, uh, well, undertake a piece of research uh, in terms of OER, OEP, as well can be focused on particular regions. Uh, it can be about uh, identification of events and fostering connections with other networks, promoting the network and as well recruitment of new members. Uh, as well, it uh, has to do with following DEI recommendation and well, some of the outputs that we are asking uh, our uh, fellows to uh, provide us is uh, regular reports back to the network, uh, three or more if they want, inputs in the GoGN website, in, and as well, a final uh, report, which luckily we'll uh, use to have a nice handbook after the scheme is finished. So what's for today? So, well, welcome uh, to our second cohort of uh, fellows, uh, Virina and Sara. Today we have Virina. Uh, we are going to have two sessions and it's worth to say because uh, we have, and we are very happy to have uh, fellows from all around the world. And we have kind of organized uh, different time zones to accommodate uh, reasonable timing for uh, running the webinars. So, um, well, welcome, uh, Virina and Nicole. Uh, you are going to be talking today about your fellowship proposal. And uh, well, no need to spoil it. Let's uh, load your presentation and you can proceed to let us know. Well, thank you. So we'll get started right now, Paco. Does that, yeah? Yes, so that was Okay, so welcome to the open podcast project, uh, which is really exploring open pedagogies through podcasting. First, we want to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, in the spirit of respect, reciprocity, and truth, we honor and acknowledge Mohinistas and the traditional Treaty 7 territory and oral practices of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Sitsika, Kanai, Pikani, as well as the Nakoda and Tsutsina nations. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. Finally, we acknowledge all nations, Indigenous and non, who live and work and play on this land and who want to honor and celebrate this territory. It's important for us to acknowledge um, our ancestors and those who were on the land before us, especially with everything that's been going on in Canada over the last week where 215 bodies of children were found last week in um, graves outside of Kamloops, uh, British Columbia. And I actually work as an instructional designer in Kamloops, uh, although I'm based in Calgary at the Thompson's River University. So I just wanna make sure that I acknowledge that we are thinking of those voices <laughs> of those lost and forgotten, or not forgotten, pardon me, not forgotten souls, um, as we think about this project um, in the next few months. So why podcasting? How did this start? So as I just described, uh, I am an alumni penguin, or that's what I have uh, categorized myself as. I'm an instructional designer with open learning at Thompson Rivers University, as I said. I'm also an adjunct assistant professor with the Workland School of Education, University of Calgary. And over the last few years, I've been teaching as a sessional instructor with the University of Calgary and the University of Victoria. And uh, one of my courses was called The Ethics of Educational Technology. And Nicole was one of my graduate students in my course. And she is going to be working on this podcasting project with us. And I am not going to tell you uh, or steal her thunder by saying, why did we decide to do this project? So go ahead, Nicole, please introduce yourself. 
Hi, nice to meet everyone. My name is Nicole Neitzling. I've been dubbed a future penguin, I guess. So I'm a graduate student and yes, I was in Brina's course last year. It was my first introduction, introduction into open. So we um, co-designed an OER press book and I got really curious about the entire open movement and open education. Um, during that time, we actually went into lockdown. I was living in the Middle East and I got invited into a podcast. So the idea was we would connect through podcasting with teachers in Asia to learn what had gone on there, what had worked, what hadn't. Um, we in the Middle East had only gone into lockdown for about a week, so I could use some of their strategies to help me. And then about three weeks later, I think North America, South America went into lockdown. So it was kind of a, a way of spreading knowledge and really quickly assembling information. And I thought there's something to this podcast, especially because they can be so open. It was a really good way of, of sharing information. So I thought, let's combine this whole idea of open and spreading knowledge with podcasts and go down the rabbit hole and talk Dr. Roberts into <laughs> doing this with me. So it kind of came from that. Plus, when I was invited in, I noticed that I was the only female in this whole group of male. And we just kind of thought like, I thought this has got to be a good way of amplifying other voices and hearing other voices in open. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Thanks, Nicole. I was actually involved in a podcasting project numerous years ago uh, called the K-12 multiple, or sorry, Multiplying K-12 OER project, which looked at uh, open educational resources in Alberta in particular, and OEP. Um, and it didn't, really gain a lot of momentum it didn't move forward but i knew but i have ex uh, knowledge and how to build podcasts how to think about podcasting and so i was really curious on how to apply what i'd started a few years ago with what nicole um, has suggested and brought to the table as well as how it could connect to my dissertation work so my dissertation work focused on um, what I call the open learning design intervention or designing for open from the beginning. So I have right now we have version one, two and three. So version one, many of you have heard about before was when I thought about developing relationships with learners. And then uh, my, the idea was developing digital literacies. And then I was going to intentionally promote interactions, collaborations and connections. And that would lead to personal learning networks. That was the initial idea of Oldie, the Open Learning Design Intervention in 2017. But as we all know, with our dissertation research, um, things change. And so by the end of my dissertation research, this evolved into four stages, all supported by reflective practice or reflective work. So this is version two from 2019, where stage one is building relationships. Stage two is co-designing learning pathways. Stage three is building and sharing knowledge. And that's how we get to building and supporting personal learning networks. This is amplified more uh, with essential conditions of open learning, open educational practices, learning awareness, and then I just describe how um, this occurs in terms of the practice in more detail here. And of course, if anyone wants to read my dissertation, they can find out more. But in Nicole's course in particular, and what we're gonna be looking at um, in this uh, particular project is how we get from an idea and how we focus on process um, to product itself. So the way it works for us in terms of open learning design uh, intervention is to promote that reflection all the way through, but we do this through internal feedback and external feedback loops. Um, and that's what we're going to try to explore a little bit more <laughs> in the next few months. So Nicole, do you wanna explain a little bit more about our project? Yeah, definitely. I'll just go one more slide. So we've got a couple different timeline stages. Right now we're in our learn phase. So we've been interviewing all the people that are already involved in podcasts or who are, have some knowledge that they can, can help us with. Through that, we're also collecting all of those resources to try and build something. So if an educator is in the same position where they're like, I wanna try this with my class. They have a whole collection um, and jumping off point. We're gonna send out an online survey too, just to kind of get some ideas as to what makes a good podcast, um, length of podcast, what kind of topics within the realm of open we're interested in. So that's where we are right now. Next, then we move into our refining stage where we kind of um, get into a real niche focus on our content and reach out to possible guests. Then we need to build it all, which will be fun. 
and we're aiming to produce at least four um, podcasts. And then after that, we're going to move into more of a feedback research stage where they'll go out, we'll get some feedback from it. And we're also looking into how and what's ethically appropriate when researching with open data. So if you're using a podcast or, or Twitter even, um, and you're collecting data from that, because technically it's open, what can you exactly do with that data? So that's kind of the overarching steps of where we're headed. Yeah, and that research part, especially if we're looking at transcripts or data and the intention is different than the intention at which it was made. So how do we ethically use that data from, or, or how do we ethically think about open data? Anything else, Nicole, you good? No, I think that's good. Nope. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to do this one? Yeah, so our original intentions are really to like look at perspectives and have a bit more equality in the voices that come through. Um, just to learn about a diverse range of people involved in open and what they're experiencing. I think also through podcasting, you can develop a, a community. So we're really looking to connect and, and build and, and push the GoGN community out there. Um, and then the last one that we did, we were mentioning before was the open data, open data collection. So what are ethically can we use from this? Um, how can we approach it? Where can we go based on the information we gather? So today is our kickoff and we have our survey link here, which we have adapted from the survey link um, from Chrissy's project, the Open Storybook project, which or picture book project, which I was also a part of, which is a part of this project as well, because it's great to be part of one fellowship and then transfer the, the knowledge and the skills into the next project. But we adapted that survey and you'll see it right here and I'll put the link in the chat box. Um, and we encourage you to send it out far and wide. This did not go through ethics approval. Uh, um, we just wanna make that really clear at this point. This is purely voluntary and this is to help us with resources in particular, finding great resources and, and gaining ideas about your perspective in order to help us um, create uh, the podcast series, but also in order to help and share some great resources from around the world. Um, other things that are really important are that uh, Nicole does speak Spanish and I am starting to speak French again. Um, so we really wanna encourage those of you who don't uh, speak English and speak other languages. And so maybe how we can integrate at least one podcast that is not in English. Um, so any Spanish speakers in particular because of Nicole's strength, um, maybe you could consider being one of our guests. And if you're curious about or would like to be one of our guests in the future on our podcast and you don't know exactly what our topics are about yet, um, please take that risk and consider contacting us. But that is about it. And I'll just get the link for that survey. And if you have any questions. It's, I got it in the chat, you're good. Oh, thank you. We're sorted. So here we go. That's it at this point, Paco. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was very clear uh, presentation. Uh, we have some time for questions. And uh, you have your microphone as well available to be used in case. So the um, the action plan on what the series was about. At first, it was going to be about open educational practices, Chrissy, but we soon discovered that there are multiple podcasts about pedagogy. Um, that's part of our learning process right now is discovering about all the different podcasts that are already out there. So at this point, we think that the series is going to be about stories of openness. How did, how did you or the two people, the two guests, get to be where they are and how did that influence their research or how did that influence their work or how did that influence their jobs? I think that's the direction that it's currently going, but we will send out more details exactly on the topics of the podcast series um, because the goal is to try to make it sustainable. So it has to be a niche kind of topic that Gojian can expand upon after we're done. Is that right, Nicole? We're yeah, I was going to say what we're hearing so far from people we've been talking to is the element of story. Yeah. Like really getting people's stories that apparently is engaging in podcasting and you can learn a lot from that. So we're trying to rework our idea a little bit to incorporate more of that narrative or, or going back to even what we've said is our original oral cultures, like how we shared knowledge. 
So we're, we're kind of trying to tweak. And so ideas, we're open to, to feedback and ideas on that, but we're, we're definitely adapting our original idea based on, on feedback and what we've been hearing in interviews. It was suggested, for example, Alan Levine's stories of openness, which were done through video. Um, maybe we can, you know, adapt that idea and move forward um, and do it in a kind of a podcast series. We're not, we're not entirely sure, but everyone will know exactly what the, the topic <laughs> or the focus is as we move forward. Yes, please send me all of them. Yes. yes. Yeah, exactly. That one. Yeah. Yeah, that is, and maybe... We were thinking if uh, if Cog Dog is listening, maybe we will ask him. If, it could be interesting if he kind of started off the series and moved us forward. But I do find it really interesting that in Canada, in particular, or both from Canada, uh, and everything that's going on in the world right now. <coughs> excuse me. It is rather interesting that this po this project in particular is about trying to amplify the voices that haven't necessarily been heard. Any other questions for Brina and Nicole? So I definitely hope you have lots of energies because you're proposing quite a few things to do during the next six months. That's why there's two of us. <laughs> yes, well, there's a few more that have already joined up. It's rather exciting that many of the students from my class have actually volunteered. <laughs> so it's quite helpful. They're not in my class anymore. They're just great mm -hmm. people. So. The what are the challenges? Um, getting uh, everything done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time frame, because we often, I think both of us think really big. And so narrowing it down so that it's really high quality, but still engaging. Um, I think another challenge will be, uh, I don't have any experience podcasting. So really learning how to do that. And I think the narration and the person hosting is really the link between all of them and is incredibly important. Um, so learning how to do that and link everything together effectively and just building it to be sustainable. So like Verena said, being able to create something of high quality that Gojian could take and, and expand upon. It doesn't just disappear. Some of the, the people that we've already interviewed have suggested are for um, podcasts could be the starting for and then it'll be passed on to another person and another person and another person and so how do we design for that and how do we design for that kind of idea or model for the future is quite exciting as well that will be a challenge <laughs> you can see carol is typing do you have a resource about how to start pocket? Yeah, we have a couple. We're starting to get them. Yeah, verena has got a lot because she's done it before. And then we've had a few people um, that have sent us some gems that are just, I'm going to lean into to them for help. Laura, I, Laura's been phenomenal with that. Laura Pasconini. Pasconini and also yeah. um, at Thompson Rivers University has some resources as well. Brenda Clark Gray. So we're really lucky, but I I do find yeah, it that it's more. <laughs> yeah, what we're missing are uh, like how to create podcasts if you're not in Canada or if you're not in the United mm. States and you don't have the infrastructure. So any of those kinds of resources would be greatly appreciated uh, from wherever you are. And if there's a need, so that's going to be interesting too. So we'll see it in the survey. Like uh, we have some bias and some ideas about why we would use podcasting, but um, we're curious to learn more about that. Because we think it's a bit, you know, centric on our world at this point for us. So we need to learn more. They can be in different it languages, be, Chrissy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That won't stop as long as, well, actually, at this point, it can only really be English, French, and Spanish, <laughs> because that's what our hosts can speak. But if we were able to connect with someone who would like to speak and be the host in another language, we're willing to do that as well and yes. figure that out. Yeah, that would be but cool. they that they would have to take on hosting duties, I think, because we couldn't do that. And that is a challenge to try to figure out, just like you did, Chrissy, with the picture book. <laughs> Great. Any further question? 
I think it's been quite a uh, uh, useful presentation to get to know uh, your research plan. And yeah, as I said, you have quite a lot of things to achieve. And yeah, but it seems you are quite well organized as well. And well, encourage people to, to fill in the form uh, so you can get uh, lots of information to start working with that. Uh, I think now we can have a short break and and then we can have our uh, round table with the uh, first cohort of fellows. Thank Sounds you very good. Much. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks so much. So indeed, welcome, uh, Virginia, Chrissy. Uh, so the idea in this uh, next half an hour is to have a very, uh, very informal uh, conversation to uh, uh, talk about your fellowship, your experience, and for that reason, uh, the idea is to keep it quite uh, participative. So anyone from the audience, feel free to write your questions or uh, use your microphone. Uh, so we have kind of an informal conversation between all of us. Uh, first of all, I think it's important you briefly uh, introduce the audience uh, about your fellowship. Uh, I think they know, but uh, still, uh, it's, it's nice to uh, refresh us with uh, some ideas. Uh, so, Virginia, if you feel like, just let them know a bit about your uh, fellowship. What did you do last six months? Okay, yes. Uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me and for the members, uh, for being here, our friends, uh, GoGM family. Uh, I'm very, very happy to, to finish this uh, first uh, course of research fellowship. Uh, I think it's uh, very important for, for GoGN to, to have a new court and my congratulations for our friends that are starting now. Uh, well, I'm, I finished my, my, my research that was focused on K-12 teachers and what uh, they managed to, to deal with uh, uh, the, the grid onlining and uh, in which way they, they use uh, uh, or adopted all year in, in their practices to do so. And it was really interesting, the, uh, the findings. Uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, quite a, it's an inspiration of what can, uh, as OER practitioners and researchers can, can do to, to show the, the way uh, that OER is present in, fact, in practices, or how can uh, uh, already existing practices can be uh, transform it in, in an open way. So the, I, I think that is the most important uh, thing or finding I, 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 uh, I achieved. Um, I used a grounded theory approach for the study and um, with uh, three case studies in three schools in different uh, parts of the country, Uruguay. And uh, I interviewed uh, teachers and 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 uh, principals of those uh, of those schools, and uh, I think uh, uh, some findings can be highlighted. Uh, the most important, I think, is uh, is that um, um, the the integration into practice uh, results uh, highlight the evidence of new practices of use of or are currently available in the national repositories, uh, which is a very important new, I think, um, because uh, the, the administration uh, and also the Plan Ceibal uh, had a, a very important effort to develop um, in the previous years, uh, many OER and uh, other educational technologies uh, resources. Uh, that uh, were used by the by the teachers uh, in this uh, emergency situation. Um, sharing practices, uh, I think they're the other uh, very important finding because teachers highlight that I, they say that the most important thing they they uh, experienced was collaboration that is started to be more present and more important in in the in the schools that is not often for them to collaborate each other and collaborate also with other schools in the same uh, province, for example. So uh, I think it's more it's important to highlight that they talk about a human scale. Uh, 
it's uh, like what sharing uh, mean in in the OER uh, landscape. It's not always about repositories. It's about uh, collaboration and sharing in 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 the communities of educational communities. I, I think it's very important this this uh, this finding. Also, uh, I think. Uh, this is still a lack of knowledge, uh, and I think it's uh, about copyright literacy. Uh, and uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, less, uh, this, this problem about uh, differentiation between OER and the other resources is still present in our communities and in our education communities. And I think we have to develop um, in, in a more deeper way uh, some. Uh, initiatives uh, regarding uh, uh, um, copyright literacy. And uh, also it's important that uh, the, the leadership that uh, uh, the principals of the, of the schools, uh, um, 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 it was very important for when a school was, uh, has, uh, had, sorry, uh, an, uh, um, a principal that was a leader in, in, in the way of organizing and, and uh, um, promoting collaboration and joining, it was a better uh, use uh, and adoption of OER. And um, also it was uh, very, very important the, the way that they, they par the partners, the other teachers partners that had more uh, uh, experience or, or more um, uh, um, um, capacities uh, de uh, development uh, in in in, a, in in education technology, she, for example, or most or on year uh, to lead uh, the work of other teachers. Um, I think uh, the the result of the of the of the experience that uh, teachers uh, um, uh, experienced during the these emergency times was a um, a process that. Uh, in which uh, they become, became agents of the curriculum change. That is uh, re really uh, um, important for the, the conditions of being a teacher and the way uh, can uh, OER lead uh, the, the process of uh, or, or being um, um, an inspiration to uh, um, in, uh, to let t uh, teachers be in agents of, of curriculum change. Uh, I want to, 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 to read some of the quotations of their uh, discourse so as to bring the, uh, their voices. Teachers' roles in fundament is fundamental in the classroom. I do not know if authorities became aware of the amount of resources created by teachers in these months. Uh, I, and it's an infinite world of possibilities. It has a lot to do with our biographies and trajectories as well. At least the fear has been lost. You had to learn and was someone who supported another. Returning to the resources to be able to work, to analyze didactically, to be able to reuse them, to redesign them, the resources, no? according to the purpose, changing the pedagogical intention, to be able to take advantage of them, to find meaning from that place and appropriate them. Now the technology looks for its by for place, for its place by itself. Now we are prepared. It was a shared learning. I think is is that quotations uh, can show the way teachers uh, experience this opportunity to change and to be Asians. Thank you very much, uh, Virginia. Very timely research, uh, George, and as well, very interesting to see the engagement between different stakeholders. Uh, that's that's always very uh, relevant. Looking forward to reading more about it. Uh, Chrissy, would you be so keen to present uh, your fellowship? Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you, first of all, for, yes, for this invitation, like uh, Virginia said, uh, for the fellowship that enabled a, a wide collaboration, and congratulations to the new fellows from me as well, and, and good luck uh, on this journey, and one piece of advice, reach out if you need help. Um, we are all here to, to support you. Um, 
I think since Verena is here as well, it might be nice to bring her also in because she was part of the team. Is that okay, Paco? Yeah. Um... And I'll, I'll start talking, but we can then also involve uh, Verena. We haven't rehearsed anything and I'm putting her on the spot here, but I hope that's okay. <laughs> Birina, you can switch on your camera and microphone if you feel like. Okay, would you like me to start then or? Yes. Okay, so we, well, I had the crazy idea and I think uh, GoGN was even crazier to, to accept it and let us do it. Um, that was a bit scary, I think, because we started on a blank canvas. We. Well, I didn't have an idea, but I brought colleagues into the team. As you can see here, they're all mentioned uh, on the slide. We were eight uh, open educators. Majority of us are parts of, uh, of the GoGN family, um, but there, also, there is also one family member uh, on their mention. That's Odie Frank, that's my youngest son, and Brian Mathers, who joined the team in an emergency because uh, we had a crisis and uh, we, uh, the well, the communication broke up with the illustrator that I had managed to secure, but then it didn't come to fruition. So we needed to improvise. And that improvisation came with Chrissy becoming the illustrator <laughs> with Odie, um, with the support uh, and valuable mentorship uh, by, uh, by Brian, which we all know uh, through the Penguins and all the other excellent work that he has been doing for, for so long for all of us. So what we have done is basically we wanted to create a picture book about open education and we reached out to the wider community through a survey um, like Verena is doing now and we're looking for responses of what open education means to uh, two colleagues across the world uh, in the form of animals. So we have written that work up in a number of uh, blog posts, which you'll find on the GoGN website. And I don't know if Paco could share now or later uh, the link maybe to, I think there is a special site now, isn't it, for all the projects. So if that can be shared maybe, and if it's useful for colleagues to read. But we took inspiration from there. Uh, and it was fascinating, uh, the responses we got. We obviously wanted to create a picture book because that is an opportunity to do something um, different to um, engage uh, perhaps younger audience and audiences outside higher education, also older, um, oh, older doesn't sound very good, does it? <laughs> Politically correct, all generations uh, anyway, in the process of uh, yeah, what open education is. But we very quickly came to the conclusion uh, and also through peer feedback that we were seeking throughout that actually um, a, a picture book about open education was not really th that such a good idea. So it became a picture book about the values of open education. And if you have read the book or have seen the book, um, you might think, I can't see the connection there between uh, open education and, and the story you have done. I think you do need imagination and you need to see the book as a, uh, as a metaphor that takes you on a journey, like we have here, the river and the animals. The animals are all uh, good and bad, because we very quickly through the survey discovered that like humans, you know, they are good humans and they're bad humans. It's not because they are humans, they're all bad. It's the same with animals. And uh, some of the animals were replicated in, in good uh, and bad, which confirmed that uh, very clearly for all of us. So we didn't stick to the, um, stereotypes if you like and uh, we created the book we worked six of us worked together on the story in two teams uh, and uh, that was a challenge i mean i had loads of sleepless nights uh, because i didn't feel like we are getting anywhere but in the end it did all happen it did all come together we worked together we were committed uh, we had regular meetings and uh, we, we managed to come up with a story that's 154 words, I think. So six months in six months, we actually wrote 154 <laughs> words and created 15 images as well afterwards and combined the two. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot of work, but it has been a lot of hard work. And it shows that, you know, it's actually harder to write less than actually fill 80,000 like you would do in a, in a PhD, for example. I'm not comparing it directly with a PhD. Obviously, it's something very different. But uh, the amount of work that goes in um, makes you really appreciate picture books, I think, more. 
the thinking behind it and all the you know the exchange and um the review the ongoing review we are grateful to the community who we have shared as a process developed uh, drafts at various stages uh, of the of the story itself and um, illustrations and i think that has helped us uh, make it better now what we have done also is we have tried to model well we haven't tried we have done we have modeled using oer to recreate artwork and stories. So we have been inspired not just by, sur by the survey and the results that we got, but also through stories that are out there. So when you read it, I think depending on, on your past reading um, sort of diet, if you like, you might recognize some snippets from fairy tales or other stories. Equally, the images, for example, here in the middle, you see the river, that is actually, and Paco can tell us from which artist that is, uh, that is an, uh, a detail from, um, from an art, yes, from an, from a, from an artwork that is uh, in, um, in the Rijksmuseum. So we have taken a number of exhibits from the Rijksmuseum um, after being inspired by the work that the museum is doing in a talk that we all, all I think most of the team was actually in Delft when that happened, where we become, became aware that the whole collection almost is available, you know, under an open license. Um, so we felt that it might be a nice opportunity to model how we can use uh, some of that artwork in, in picture books to promote open education. Because there's also that thing where we say, oh, yes, anybody can produce open education resources and nobody is reusing them, et cetera, et cetera. We have heard the story. So we have tried to bring that A into something uh, artistic, if you like, but also to model how that can be used in a different context to spread open education uh, to different audiences. Um, I think we are all happy with the output. We were quite um, um, worried. I think I personally at least was worried about, you know, the reaction of, of the audience, of people who would read it. Uh, Go GN, first of all, who supported this. But it seems, I mean, I would like some perspectives of colleagues who have um, seen the book outside the team to, to get some feedback, uh, perhaps. But it's out there it has been translated into over 20 i think almost 30 languages now and uh, we are continue writing and doing research about the book the application of the book next week we are um, with, with three colleagues are uh, involved in, um, in a global culture jam where the picture book will become an activity for others to uh, to create their own version we are making all the, the images available um, there is a nice program that my eldest son uh, has created where we can doodle on, on the images and we'll share again the link here in a tiny bit when I stop talking. <laughs> and um, yeah, we are writing a, a chapter and, and more is planned in the future. So the fellowship has enabled um, the start of a collaboration, but it doesn't seem to finish because we are keen to continue and see the potential. We have also been in touch with the Rijksmuseum and shared um, a, a previous version before it was finalized. And um, the lady who did the, the keynote, I can't now remember her name, unfortunately, but um, she is very much uh, um, willing to support us to spread um, the picture book itself and see how we can collaborate. So we are looking into this. And now that we have the website on GoGN, we can share that link also with her to make that a bit more formal and see what comes from that. But we hope the whole idea was to spread open education beyond higher education, because I personally feel that it's often seen as, as a box, as a container where open education is more relevant. But as Virginia said, you know, and it was lovely to hear her talking about that um, the teachers have opened up and started collaborating, because one thing that teachers generally doesn't seem to be doing willingly is that collaboration you know this is mine and they are quite often quite protective so it's lovely to hear that um, what, what you have found is to open up and sharing and that that's that they see value in this that's really fantastic um should i stop here v uh, verena <laughs> are you still with us she was in the chat can you hear me? Yep. I don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> OK. 
Chrissy, I just want to say this was such a fantastic experience. You were a fearless leader, but I think what you just did again and then you did over and over was um, share your vulnerability in a transparent way. And that was so appreciated uh, as an open learner and open advocate. And that's why the project was successful, because quite honestly, it was rather challenging and rather difficult. It was for many ways. But that transparency and, and risk taking especially made it incredibly global. I didn't even know we had so many languages. And now it's now it's taking on a life of its own in different ways, which is really exciting as well. So thank you. Big kisses and hugs. That's all. Great job. Thank you for being part of this. And nothing would have been possible, you know, without the collaboration of everybody. We all contributed. And I think what we did is we used the strengths of everybody. And that's why when you have, you know, a diverse team, that's quite nice. So it's not just working with people who are like you. That can be more problematic, but trying to pick people who are not like you. <laughs> That's that's great. Um, I I appreciate uh, very much your introductions. The only thing is that you have kind of answered many of the questions I have prepared for discussing together, which is great. And I was realizing that uh, even with that, uh, and considering we have uh, the attendance, it would be uh, fantastic to to get questions because uh, we have this opportunity to interact with with Chrissy and Virginia. So uh, please. Uh, um, feel free to use the microphone. We can uh, discuss uh, and make questions to uh, Virginia and Chrissy about their experience. Um, as I said, you as mostly have covered uh, these uh, these questions to to have together. But I was just kind of wondering, uh, and not even taking care of these questions, I'm realizing if you have to choose uh, one one uh, one thing, what probably was the the best thing that happened during the the fellowship in terms of of your research and as well. What was the the situation at the moment you felt it was more difficult? Oh, Virginia, you're on mute. Chrissy, do you want to start maybe? I, I switched mine off in case it was because I had my microphone on. I don't know. What do you want me to do? Should I start? Yes, please. So, so one thing that one thing that uh, I enjoyed the most, mm -hmm. and the thing that working, you found more problematic. Was, okay, I think one thing that I enjoyed the most is uh, that I was with other penguins. <laughs> that I didn't do it alone uh, on the journey. So. I think that that was the biggest enjoyment and i think that was that's also what led to the success that we did it together um, one thing that i found the most difficult i think i mentioned already that was with the illustration the frustration but through that process um i have learned i have become a bit more confident in myself in my drawing abilities and hopefully that will lead to other things who knows <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I can manage to, to, to unmute. Uh, well, what I enjoyed um, mostly was the, to know what was happening in my country during the, the last year, the, the wonderful uh, and the joy uh, that was in the middle of a, a crazy pandemic uh, and uh, a lot of vulnerability of the educational communities, but. The, the way that the teachers managed to to get uh, joy of these to create to, to collaborate to share and uh, the way they learned about uh, their their capacities and 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 be more uh, gain gain power being more powerful so uh, I think uh, that was the the the, the joy. And also, it was uh, I, I feel honored to to have uh, been one of the uh, first research fellows of uh, Goji, and I think it is very, very important for my career. I feel very, very happy for that, and I'm I feel happy for the the next uh, generation. Uh, it's it's quite a um, it's, it's really important for our careers uh, to be part of this family. That's fantastic. 
I was wondering as well, because you have been very ref reflective in your process and considering the steps you have taken, uh, I mean, COVID hasn't helped it. Uh, as well, I'm aware Chris, you have to uh, take decisions in, in terms of, of uh, uh, doing the designs uh, herself and much more work she had planned to do by herself. Uh, what would you do uh, different if you could travel back uh, in time? And why do you appear like that now? <laughs> and, uh, and, and start your fellowship again? Do you want me to go first or? Oh, sorry. I was just, okay. Yeah, you haven't given us any thinking space, have you? <laughs> no, I was <laughs> Anyway, I anyway was what pops in my head, what pops in my head now is, I mean, since we had that problem with the uh, illustrator, um, I didn't consider that there might be expertise beyond myself in the team that would like to be involved in the illustration. Um, and I found out very late that we had actually at least one team member who would have loved to be involved in the illustration. And I said, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, so yes, yeah, so I, I should have uh, opened up and maybe be more explicit that you know, any help on the illustration side would also be welcome and I would share that in a similar way we had done with the text, with the written story. That's it, over to you, Virginia. Uh, for me, it's what uh, I, I misunderstood uh, the call and supposed that the research had to be only mine and could um, join other members. So uh, what uh, I, I regret is uh, that it was uh, an, uh, an, uh, I was alone in the journey, but uh, it was very important uh, the, the way Paco um, um, shared with me some thoughts and we talked in Spanish, what is, which was very good for me uh, and, and can uh, manage the, the, the questions and the, the doubts that I, I had in the process. Um, I think uh, that is what I regret most. <laughs> That's great because uh, this is a learning process for us as well and trying to pr improve ourselves for the next uh, cohorts of fellows. So yeah, you paid that uh, that experience, but it's great to share it with us uh, openly. Uh, Can I, I ask a question? Yes. Um, you kindly provided these opportunities for all four of us. Two of us are here now, and you know, two, two further colleagues um, starting. What is your feedback, your overall feedback on on what we produced as a collective, as the four of us? I wasn't prepared for that question. Well, uh, here you go. <laughs> I think one of the one of the important aspects is that uh, we, we have been quite flexible in terms of, of time. So uh, I know Virginia and Joanna are still analyzing the data. And, and my feeling is that uh, there is a potential for next steps. So as you have said uh, before, Chrissy, uh, you are in touch with quite a lot of people to move forward the proposal of the picture book and, and all those conversations with the Rig Museum and, and I think the impact uh, of this research uh, in terms of COVID in Uruguay uh, can be very, very relevant as I think uh, the expansion and, uh, and the knowledge of the network uh, in Africa from uh, Judith and as well uh, the research from uh, uh, Joanna in, in Australian terms can uh, be a seat as well for our uh, development as a, uh, open educational researchers. So I think that's probably one of the, the best things uh, we can uh, take from the fellowships that are actually being a good opportunity for a strength networks and and develop career and have an impact for your career and, and for the network. Um, I was Sorry, just wondering... can I say another thing? Sure. In in, in regarding what uh, what said, uh, uh, I think it's it's really interesting the way that the the four first court had really uh, different approach on um, being a research fellow. It was very creative. And, and I think that the next one are uh, uh, deepening this approach that uh, a research fellow can be a really different kind of, uh, 
of uh, of 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 works uh, being done. So uh, it's it's very interesting this, and and I think it's very important to be highlighted. Can I, so if I make a comment, just in reply to Chrissy's. I would think. <laughs> I, I think that was that was my feeling too, Virginia. That was the thing that I found really interesting. So we had no idea what we would get back when we put these fellowships out. And I have to say big thanks to Paco for running the process. It's been, but all four fellowships have required different forms of payment and all these kind of things. So Paco's been really testing it on your systems. Uh, but I think, you know, we had no idea what we would get back in. Um, and we thought they might get like four four versions of the same thing, but in different places or something, you know. And we got four completely different projects, you know. I think that we would never have thought up on our own. Um, and I think that's that's what's been really interesting. And so I think you know, there's been as much a learning curve for us, you know, like you know, we didn't know what a GoGN fellowship looked like. And I think now now we have a, a better idea. And, and actually, it looks like anything you want it to look like, which is really good news. So I think. I think I'm really pleased with that diversity, and all of them have been successful in their own ways. So I think that's been great. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if anyone else uh, from the uh, the audience want to say anything. Is the moment to ask any question to Chrissy and Virginia about their experience. I was going to ask you a question. How do you think this fellowship opportunity is, is in your opinion or perspective, is going to help or shape you, your researcher, um, credibility or identity or professionally? How has this opportunity helped you um, and your reputation as a researcher? Or, yeah, what do you think? Or has it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my English. Uh, well, um, uh, I think uh, uh, being a GoGN research fellow is a very it's, it's an honor for us, um, and uh, this is uh, just being that is uh, is important. And uh, I think I, but for me, it was interesting to to check the way my uh, my concept model uh, that i developed in my in my thesis in my doctoral thesis can be applied in another context in another um in another um uh level of uh, education and uh, can and can work so for me it was very interesting uh find this and and and, and show the strong or of, of my research so I think uh, one of the impacts is being more confident. Confident is is that the way? Confident on on my on on my work, and uh, I think also is uh, uh, Go Gen uh, give a lot of vis visibility of what you do, and it, um, can uh, um, add value to 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 our work. Um, in, in general, uh, the, the way we, uh, people in open education work is uh, mostly in the margins. We work in the margins of uh, research, in the margins of uh, uh, institutions, in the margin of in the approach is not the mainstream. So uh, being um, being uh, in in some way. Uh, um, uh, most uh, visible, uh, most visible because of uh, uh, the um, GoGN as uh, as um, a very relevant uh, organization and, and in 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 our field uh, can uh, uh, show your work and say that it it is is value. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it had uh, a lot of uh, um, confidence. Uh, for for me, for example, um, we are uh, in some in some part of the world. You are quite alone in this kind of uh, approach. So uh, it's uh, also uh, um, w when you are in the same uh, level of other that have a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of experience, like Chrissy, for example, or. Um, being part of a, 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 a more 
uh, um, um, more a bigger uh, organization that can uh, you can be part is uh, is in 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 some way um, like a, like a hug you you feel hugged. That, that that's what I think. That's beautifully said. Um, I think uh, Virginia. I would say if you if you are a person who is strategic, Verena, you might get loads from it that might benefit you professionally if you are a person who uh, like i am if you like who has never been strategic uh, but just loves doing things and loves playing with ideas and experimenting uh, you do it for for the love of of experimentation and working with other people so i feel that i have grown in that area uh, and i don't expect that this will help me in any shape or form um, professionally i don't do it to get recognition i do it just as an opportunity to to experiment and play thanks uh, i really like that aspect of uh, of uh, building your confidence and and kind of fighting your uh, fears as a uh, researcher at the let's say early stage and yeah, try to uh, advance and and have the, the opportunity to build that network. Um, so I, I can see people are writing. So any other comment? I'm aware of time as well. So we might have time for last uh, question. Yeah, I agree with you, Katie. I think, and that's something that Martin said before. Uh, it's been quite. Uh, uh, we already are getting six in this with the new cohort, six different proposals, which are uh, so different but rich in terms of of uh, values of research in in open education and, and ideas. We didn't think when we uh, opened the call. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a learning process uh, as well. So really, really great having you. Here today, anything you, uh, Chrissy and Virginia, want to add? This kind of final recalls. I want to send to say thank you. Thank really. you. Thank you for me too and the whole team. <laughs> thank you very much. I I, I, I I want to add that Chrissy and the other team have to continue uh, in this work of uh, um, developing uh, picture books. Uh, there it was really nice <laughs> thank you so much thank you Go ahead. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much uh well thank you uh Verena, uh and uh and virginia and chrissy for being uh, here today and having this opportunity uh to get to know more about uh about future research of Verena and your uh experience so far uh but this is just the first part of two uh next month our webinar We'll have uh, Sarah uh, introducing her fellowship proposal for the second court, and we'll share a similar informal talk with Judith and, and Johanna. And yeah, uh, hopefully it has been uh, uh, good in terms of uh, of timing for you. Uh, it was really really difficult to coordinate timing with, particularly with Australia and West Coast in the Pacific. So, uh, so but that's uh, indeed good news because this means we have people all around the world. So yeah, thank you very much for your time and uh, see you all in a month.